Okay, thank you. Call that was um, reasonably comprehensive and um, that's the reason why medieval clergy didn't want non-scholars reading the Bible. Relatively, relatively something which I'd expected uh, from you. Now let me go back to the thing which I didn't force on you. The thing which I suggested to you, oh, which I think was okay. sound logic, which is I made some statements which unambiguously from Jesus' own mouth clearly says that he, he was claiming that he was God. I'll repeat the examples again. Uh, Jesus uh, said in reference to himself that he was the one who comes mm. in the name of Yahweh. The one who comes in what's the, the name the, of Yahweh. What's the reference to that? Matthew 23, verse 39. Luke 13, verse 35. No, just one reference. Quoting, we'll quoting from Psalms 118, verse 25 and 26. Sorry, Matthew 23, what was it? Uh, 30, 23, 39. 39. So, so, so Jesus there clearly was quoting from Psalms where the expression uh, is Yahweh God and Jesus was claiming himself to be Yahweh. The law, uh, elsewhere, Jesus can, I, can I read it? It says, For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Jesus came in the name of the Lord. I don't see how that's a claim to deity. So, so again, let, let's be careful. Matthew quotes from Psalms 118, 25, 26 where the name used there is Yahweh himself and mm. the my crucial point earlier Paul was this which is how is this a claim to name, yeah I, I, I'm telling you okay that. in the name of Yahweh mm -hmm. is a very interesting expression mm -hmm. which according to you if it's just anyone who comes because God sent him it would be applicable for any prophet but none of the other prophets or none of the prophets claimed a similar thing it was Jesus and Jesus alone who said that he was uniquely the one which who corresponds to the what's, coming. What's the psalm again? What's the psalm you psalm allegedly quoted from? One hundred and eighteen verses twenty-five. And One hundred and eighteen. Yeah. Can I can I please finish this? I just uh, need to check the references because otherwise I'm never going to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, you, you can, uh, you can hold it down. I can give you. I a don't have a pen. One hundred eighteen verse what? Twenty-five, twenty-six. But let, let me let me finish 26. this all. Yeah. So if I if I can finish this all, yeah. And then you can respond back. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be a claim to be God. You can, you can respond back. Okay. Yeah. So let me let me finish all of this. So Yahweh God, Matthew 12, 8, Mark 2, 28, Luke 6, 5. Jesus was the Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, Matthew 12, verse 6. Jesus was the one greater than the temple. Unambiguous. Uh, especially take the second one and the third one. I'm sure Paul would I want to argue about the first one. But take the second one and the third one. The Lord of the Sabbath. Any Jew what's of the, the first century. What's the reference? Uh, reference Matthew 12, 8, Mark 2, 28. No, just, just one. I'm not going to look them all up. 12 what? 12, 8, Mark 12, 2, 8. 28. No, Luke. I just need one. It's, in, this, it's in the synoptic, so it'd be the same in all three. Uh, 12, 8. So, Matthew 12. So, uh, Paul, oh, can, I, okay. can, I, can I please finish one full it, I, I'm not going to memorize all of these verses on the top of my head. So, so uh, I, I, can, I, can, I can remind so you. I just thought we're having a conversation now about this. I thought I'd check who no, your references. No, I, I just want to, as you give them on to check your references, see if they're true or not. Paul, let me, we, we are having a reasonably flexible, but still a debate. The idea is a debate. I'm bringing some flexibility at this point. Yes. Can I? Can I? Can you handle you, flexibility? The flexibility I'd like to offer to you is this. Okay. <laughs> let me finish my entire case, Paul. Let me finish my. I don't think you can handle flexibility. No, I can. Let okay. me suggest this to you. Okay. Let me finish the entire case, Fine. and I could remind to you point by point, so Fine. you can respond. It'd back. be easy if I just went through them as you mentioned them. No, but okay. in that case, I can't. You have made some serious allegations against the Bible, which are very, very serious. I haven't made any allegations against the Bible. You claim they are academic, but I think they are allegations purely. against what you say. I, 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 <laughs> But some of the points you made, especially with the elevated Christology and so on, are completely illogical, childish, even if it Ooh, comes from qualified scholars. I'm going to give reasons. These are your scholars, not mine, by the way. No, These are the, Christian scholars. They're I, not my scholars. I me, I if you prefer I'll quote Islamic pocket. scholars, how would Paul, you like that? Please, Paul. <laughs> I haven't got any scholars in my pocket. I'm Neither going to have give I. specific reasons. No scholars. <laughs> and reasons which are crucial for us. We are debating not on the subject that Paul, uh, are there scholars who don't like the Bible? That's not the topic today. That's the topic a is straw man. according it's to the Bible, man. is Jesus God? No, now, please, if not. you let me finish. <laughs> now, the question, the challenge I put forth to Paul earlier is that I have given him clear, unambiguous statements unambiguous. from Jesus' own words that he was uh, the no. Yahweh God 
Adonai God of the Old Testament. Now, I also agreed right at the start that the Christian revelation of God mm. is triune, a complex nature. And therefore, I would expect to see a complex interaction between the Father and the Son in all sorts of different ways. Now, of course, Paul alluded to specific aspects of the nature of God, which I'm going to address now. Some of the points that he raised. Please, if you I'm, going to, I'm going to address some of them, but before that, I'd like to uh, point out, mm -hmm. he hasn't so far provided an unambiguous statement, a simple unambiguous statement to reject the claims of divinity as I have quoted so far. I he have. hasn't done that. Mark, all that he has done, all that he has done so far are bringing some of the complex uh, statements which reveal the triune nature of God and using them he has made some points and I'd like to deal with some of them and see if what he said was true or not. So let's begin from the start. Uh, so all powerful so he claimed Jesus wasn't all powerful Correct. as he would expect God to be. And the example he quoted was he, he made a blind man see in a two step process. And interestingly, he referred to some sort of uh, ancient way of healing, which involves some sort of magic and this and that and whatnot. I'd like Paul to give quotations, references, well, scholars, not, not from scholars. I, I want to, I You're want to, to mention to, scholars. Paul, let okay. me finish. Paul, I thought I was going to have to mention scholars. Paul, let me please finish. Okay. Yeah, once I finish, okay. I can remind you Come all on. the points which oh, you're very I have made, which are re rebuttals for I'll your I'll quote scholars if you want me to and quote then, scholars. And then you can respond back. <laughs> now, all that I see in, this, in the passage that he read was that Jesus healed a blind man. He was able to see at the end of the process. And that to me tells me that Jesus had power to heal. But then he goes on to say, because it's a two-step process, I'm not happy. That's what he's saying in a simple way. But my problem is, well, if you want a two-step process, uh, if you're not happy with the two-step process, why don't we say that we, we won't be happy even with the one-step process? Why should God say B for that to be anything? Why doesn't God just, just even think and not even think properly before they come into existence? If he is happy with God having a one-step process, why can't God have a two-step process? Why can't God have a three-step process? Why is two any worse than one? Why is that the case? If God needs to take some step to do a miracle, why can't he do that in two steps? Now, he also said that Jesus somehow was surprised that the person didn't get healed. Uh, I'd like Paul to again read the verse carefully and tell me where Jesus is surprised. I know Jesus asked a question, and as Paul might appreciate, the question is just a question he'd like the person to respond back. Now, he could have had all sorts of things in his mind before he made that particular thing. Now, bottom line is this, a blind man was healed. Can Paul do that? Can Muhammad do that? Yes. Can anyone else do that? Yes. It is God, Jesus, who was able to do that. If you are going to say Jesus was not all powerful, I'd like you to uh, go back to the examples I gave earlier. Jesus demonstrated power over sin, power over material things, power over nature, power over demons. And uh, I think there's one more thing which I forget now. I need to get the reference. Jesus demonstrated power over literally all things. To an extent, Jews who know what the power of God is, exclaimed to say, who can this be? Now, if Paul were there, he could have, he Perfect. possibly might have you said. Don't need to shout, by the way, because we've all got microphones on. Sorry, Paul. We'll if you, if you don't shout. interrupt, please. Yeah, thank you. No. So, mm. the, if, if Paul were there, he might have said, oh, this is all usual stuff. We know about all these things. That's not the first century Jews said. The first century Jewish disciples who know their Old Testament He's did telling not. telling me what to do. Did not <laughs> carry on, carry on. The first century Jewish disciples did not give a response similar to Paul. I don't care. This is just simple stuff. That's not what they said. They said, who is this? Who is this? And at a particular point in time, they also even worshipped as a result of a, a, a miracle that Jesus uh, did. So all powerful Jesus clearly is. And the example he gave is very, very, I would think a bit uh, not logically sound two-step process I'm quite happy with as long as he can heal a blind man I'm happy with that now let's go to the next point omniscience Again, I like it. Uh, <laughs> now this is a very popular quotation omniscience I gave examples of omniscience I gave the example of, of how Jesus sent Peter telling him about a particular fish which he would catch 
uh, at, at the first instance which would have a coin in its mouth. That is omniscience to me. I can give you two more examples if you wanted. Um, John chapter 1 verse 48. Nathaniel, before Pete, Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Jesus wasn't even there. Nathaniel clearly knew that Jesus couldn't have seen him, but Jesus gave a precise mm. detail. While you were under the fig tree, I saw you. This is omniscience. And what does Paul give as a response to positive omniscience statements that I give? Paul goes back to a particular quotation from the book of Mark. And if you read that quotation carefully, you'd already see you're in big trouble. Mark chapter 13, verse uh, 13 is what he read from. I'd like to uh, suggest to Paul that he might want to read the entire passage to begin with. I have many Mark. times, probably hundreds of times in my life. Okay. I'm not bragging, I just have. The hundred, so, the hundred and one thank time, you. hundred and one time, this is the deal. At the end of the passage, or, or somewhere towards the end of the passage, this is what Jesus said. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Remarkable. Can a mere prophet make a crucial claim like this? Yes. Heaven and earth <laughs> will pass away, yes. but my words will not pass away. Now, going back to the specific allegation that Paul made, what was the allegation? The allegation was that Jesus did not know the hour of him being sent back. I'd like to ask him a question or ask him to give me a reference of a particular thing. I'm going to tell Paul, based on my reasonably extensive knowledge of the scriptures, that the hour in which Jesus would be sent back has not been decided even now. Even now. And what is there, what is not there to be known is not part of omniscience. So when Jesus says, no, I don't know, it's essentially something which is not part of reality and therefore not available for knowledge mm. and therefore when Jesus speaks about that he is not claiming uh, anything less than omniscience but he is not making any particular uh, comment in regards to his okay. omniscience Can there. I respond to some now, of these points? You made like a, 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 probably 50 points now. But you, I don't remember them all. I, I, I know, just, I know. But you, as we can shorten the talk the time a bit then I have a chance to... Uh, let, 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 me, let me go a bit fast. Yeah, no, so, you've, I've already said you've said enough. Let me respond to those points. So in I that made. case, can I please ask you one thing? Yeah, you, you can go ahead now. Yeah, you've already asked me lots and lots and lots of things. So I know, I know. Can, can I, I please ask just one, one, okay. one? And yeah. then I respond. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I'd like you to go ahead to respond. Because I, do, thank but you. my problem is this: you made a very serious, you made a very serious allegation, which is that you said that the Gospels are not reliable. John borrowed from Matthew, Mark. Yes. I think that's yeah. absolute nonsense. And well, I, give, you're I, can give you, I can give you right. can very, I, specific, can I, uh, very specific logical reasons, historical reasons to think that is absolute childishness to claim that. I'd like to go on to that. I'd like to make I, sure. No, I'd like to respond now to some of your points, if I may. But if you, you need to be Thanks. here. You, you, you need to I'm be not here. going anywhere. Before. Very good. I'm not so running away. Right. You thank you. That, that's fine. So, um, thank you. I think we ought to shorten the uh, exchanges. Otherwise, we're going to have a long, long lecture again. Okay, okay. Lots and lots and lots and lots. OK. Right. So uh, I just want to, <laughs> many things I could say. Uh, I'll uh, have a go at some of the points. The definition of omniscience which you've used many times. Omniscience means that the person so described knows everything. It doesn't mean they know something supernatural, which doubt Jesus undoubtedly did. And so did the prophet Muhammad, by the way. He knew things supernaturally by the power of God. It means they know everything. Omniscience means they know, that's the definition of the word. So I can happily acknowledge that Jesus may have known this or that or the other in, in a way that was miraculous to us as mere mortals. But the Bible says that God knows everything, everything without exception. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 20, look it up if you want. Clearly, Jesus did not know everything. He knew some amazing things, which you've given evidence for. I don't dispute those, but he did not know everything. He said, I do not know the hour. And he says, the Father does know that hour. So to say he was undecided is, I'm afraid, not what the text says. Only the Father knows the hour. The Son does not know the hour. So, by def so I have demonstrated with the simplicity of a child's understanding of 2 plus 2 equals 4 that Jesus was not omniscient. Omniscience is a characteristic or attribute of God himself. Jesus did not possess that attribute. For me, it's an open and shut case as simple and as logical as that. Now, coming to some of the other things that I haven't addressed yet about the forgiveness of sins. Uh, this is a very interesting example. Um, and you quoted from Matthew chapter 9, verse 2, where you've referenced Matthew chapter 9, verse 2, 
this is about Jesus healing a paralytic. It says here, just then some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Wow. This means Jesus must be God, right? Sorry, must be God, right? Oh, we slip into Americanism. Uh, no, because if you look at the very last verse of that very brief passage, we see the pious Jews, and when the, 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 the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. God had given this authority to human beings. It explicitly says so. It does not mean that Jesus is God. On the contrary, this passage indicates that he was not God. He was a human being to whom. Now, there are other people in the Bible who have that power as well. According to John, uh, John chapter 20, the disciples had that power. They were given that power to forgive sins, which is why Catholic priests today, when you go to confession in a Catholic church, will forgive your sins. They believe they inherited this apostolic authority to forgive sins that is explicitly mentioned in John 20. No priest that I know would ever which say that he was Yahweh, John 20. Which no, verse are you quoting? I don't know which, it's in the passage somewhere. Um, no, but if you, if you can, I'd, I'd like uh, to respond well, to them, so... I'd well, like, we'll come back to that. I'd like, but, I'd like, I'd like the quotations to be precise. Okay, please. well, yeah. it's, it's a whole passage of John 20, it discusses this. But the, the crucial point here is his quote from nine, Matthew 9, 2, which he uses evidence of Jesus' deity, forgiveness of sins, when the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. So this clearly refutes that claim very clearly. I don't, it's unambiguous. And also, uh, so th there's that. Um, also, uh, very importantly, I, I reference the whole of Acts. Now, the book of Acts, as I've already said, is the history of the early church from Jesus' ascension into heaven right up to probably the death of Paul or just before the death of Paul. And in Peter's first sermon, when he was full of the Holy Spirit, this is who he tells the Israelites who Jesus is. And I actually agree with Peter. Are you going to repeat Peter. some of the points uh, you made earlier? Excuse me, I want to, I want to repeat Paul, this. Paul, no, no, you have made something like 50 different points already. If you're going to just reiterate some of those points, I, am, I yes. think that's not going to be a good idea. Let me respond to the 50 no, first. I, I, well, I, 50 I would like... first, I would, and then you can okay. go on. Give me a couple more minutes, then I'll finish. So, G, uh, this is what Peter tells his disciples. Now, remember, according to this chap, he says Jesus is God, I say Jesus was not God. See which of us most closely matches what Peter said on the day of Pentecost. Full of the Holy Spirit, telling the Jews who Jesus really was. Who is right, this gentleman or me? Let's hear what Peter says. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you as you yourselves know. So does he match this idea of Jesus being God or my idea about Jesus being a man through whom God would? Of course, I would argue very easily and naturally it fits with my understanding of Jesus just being a man. Can I, can I please? Uh, nearly finished, nearly finished. Um, and then uh, my last piece of evidence, and this is, a, this is a bit complicated, but I would, perhaps it's homework for you. In John yeah, chapter, let's, let's in John leave, chapter, let me finish. Because, yeah. In John chapter 10, uh, the, the Jews, took up stones, it says in verse 31, to stone him because he had made himself equal with God. And this is a, a favorite verse with Christians. They say, look, Jesus is claiming to be equal with God. I didn't even uh, use that uh, with today. With Christians, I, I said. I didn't even use that. With Christians generally. Let's stick, to the, no. let's stick to the arguments I am making today. Will please. you let me finish my point? And my point is relevant to your argument because then go, Jesus goes on to refute their allegation that he was claiming to be God. Why would Jesus refute the statement that he was God, if he was God, he would say, yep, you're right, Jews, I am God, get down and worship me. No, he refutes them and says they are wrong. How, how does uh, he say and, that, and, please, if you'd like to... Oh, we do want to talk about it. Okay, yeah. well, let me read the passage to you. Say that and then close, please. <laughs> okay, well, I, I will read this passage. Uh, it begins at verse 22. At that time, uh, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said, how long will he keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you. He's already told them he's the Messiah, but you do not believe. So, uh, you want me to read the whole part? Okay. No, no, I'd like you to read the particular uh, statement I am, where Jesus right. is saying, I'm reading the context, I'm not God. the passage of the context. Yeah. Well, okay, well, well, let me finish. Yeah. If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, 
and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Jews took up stones to stone him. Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, it is not for the good works that we're going to stone you, but, uh, but for blasphemy, because you, though a human being, are making yourself God or equal to God. Jesus answered, and this is the rebuttal, the rebuttal. I said, you are, is it, sorry, Jesus answered, is it not written in your law? This is Psalm 82, by the way. I said, you are gods. If those to whom the word of God came were called gods, and the scripture cannot be, be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world is blaspheming because I, I said, I am God's son? If I'm not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me, and so on. When he's claiming to be God's son, he's claiming to be the Messiah. Because remember the beginning of the question, if you are the Messiah, tell us, I have told you, I have told you, but you do not believe. So he's claiming to be the Messiah. But he is saying, it seems to me, that if God can call human beings in the Old Testament gods, then what problem do you have when I claim to be the son of God, i.e. the Messiah? So he's in effect refuting the allegation that he's making himself equal to God. In John chapter 10, study the passage, all of it, not the few voice verses. You haven't done this, but Christians always, apart from you, quote this one verse from the Jews, this accusation, and John makes it clear elsewhere in the previous chapter that the father of the Jews is Satan, the father of lies. So it is the liar's testimony to believe what the Jews says. Jesus himself refuted what they say. So do you want to come back on that? Paul, Paul, thank you very much for that. I'd like to remind you that there are plenty of points. Even